And now to our lab. Ouch! For some amazing body experiments. Ugh. Just don't try anything you see here at home. Take a look at this. This is an MRI scan of my tongue as I'm speaking, and you can see it's pretty huge. But speaking isn't the only thing you need your tongue for. One of the best things it does is help you taste. Your tongue is covered in small hair-like projections, as I'm going to show you. Right, Zand, open your mouth nice and wide. <coughs> oh, not hair like that. I said hair-like projections. Can't see them with your naked eye, so take a look at this. This is a super close-up of your tongue. This red blob is called a papilla. Your taste buds sit on the side of it, and they contain tiny hair-like projections called microvilli to help you taste. And if you look at your tongue, the bumps you can see are the papillae. And the more papillae you have on your tongue, the more taste buds you have, and the more sensitive to taste you are. And you have more of them than we do. Because we're doctors. No, Zahn, because we're adults. We have around 5,000 covering our tongues, but you have 10,000. That's twice as many. And to prove it, Chris, I've brought in a sample. This sample is nine years old. This isn't a sample, it's a child. Anyway, the point is, we're going to compare Chris's papillae with the samples. But first, I need to cover your tongues in blue food dye. The blue dye will show up all the papillae. And now, the sample. I have a name, you know, and it's Hermione. Very noisy sample. Give me your tongue. Nice blue tongue, Hermione. Zand is putting a glass slide on both our tongues to make it easier to count the papillae. Chris's papillae are those little pale dots right there. And these are Hermione's. You can see that there's way more on her tongue, and that means more taste buds. Good job, Hermione. As we get older, your taste buds deteriorate and they aren't replaced, which is why you will be much more sensitive to strong flavours like garlic than your mum or dad. There are certain things, though, like a cold, <laughs> that can play havoc with everybody's sense of taste. But why would having a bunged-up nose affect your taste? Well, we're going to show you. Zand, meet Mr Big Mouth. Hello. Ah, you've cut him in half. Why don't you call him Mr. Cut in Half? Zand! Now, when you eat food, odour molecules are released and swirl around your mouth, but also right up into this. This is the passage that connects your mouth to your nose. And right up here, at the back of your nose, are lots of sensors called olfactory receptors, which sense and identify different odour or smell molecules and tell your brain what it is you're tasting. So, to show you this, we're going to use an equally oversized bit of kit. The smell molecule blower thingy. Also, we'll need our safety equipment and these polystyrene balls to represent those smell or odour molecules. Three, two, one, blow! We're cheating a bit because our smell molecules are being blown in, but inside your body, the smell molecules in food are released naturally as you chew. Wow, that worked really well. You can see how the smell molecules race through the back of the mouth and up the tube connecting it to the nose and right onto the olfactory receptors, which instantly recognise the smell and tell your brain what you're tasting. And your olfactory receptors can also protect you because they can tell if something is bad before you eat it. As soon as they whiff something like off milk, they alert your brain so you know not to eat it. But Zant, what would happen if Mr Big Mouth got a cold? That would be disgusting. We're going to need a lot of snot. We're smearing our snot inside the passages of our giant mouth and nose, just like when you have a cold. Let's see what happens now that Mr Big Mouth has got a big cold. Ready? Go. Look. This time, the odour molecules are getting stuck in the snot. They aren't getting anywhere near the olfactory receptors. And that means no taste. Yeah, Mr Big Nose wouldn't be able to taste anything at all. Except for that one tiny polystyrene ball. So we've shown you that, like Hermione's tongue, you've got twice the number of taste buds as us, or your mum and dad, or any adult. But as good as your tongue is, you also need your nose if you really want to savour a flavour. <laughs>